Black Ops 6 Season 1 is here, and man, oh man, do we have a metric ton of things to discuss. Changes, new features, new content, the works. So sit back, relax, and let's get you up to date on everything that changed with Black Ops 6's Season 1 update. Drop your thoughts as we go along, drop a like if you enjoy the video, and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Black Ops 6 with Season 1's launch and the integration here. A lot of testing, a lot of guides upcoming still, so make sure you're here for all of it. Plus, added bonus if you want to join us on that road to 600,000 subscribers. We're just about 1,500 subscribers away as of recording this intro, so I'd love to have you in the community but anyways let's get into it firstly the new content we of course have those new multiplayer maps in black ops 6 extraction hideout and heirloom if you are interested in playing those in particular they are in the quick play selection in that regular core map set but also we end up having them available as the season one mosh pit those giving you just those three maps nothing else if you want to play those coming on the modes of domination hardpoint kill confirmed and team deathmatch and then of course heirloom being a face-off map will include face-off kill confirmed and face off team deathmatch so no face off domination for that map in that playlist but you can again get it in the regular face off rotations along with that you of course have that new mode of ransack on all the available maps essentially and then radioactive was added in which is a 24 7 playlist of both nuketown and warhead so if that suits your fancy that is available there for you the battle pass was added in as of this update where it's an adjustment to the system of course we've talked about this a few times it's the page system now where you end up having x amount of tiers that you can unlock and then move on to the next page and then end up getting even more stuff now this page system is similar to other games where the biggest thing is you don't have to sequentially end up getting the entire thing still like it doesn't take unlocking the entire page to end up gaining access to the next page instead all you have to do is spend a certain amount of tokens to end up getting access to an additional page beyond that the first game that comes to my mind though there's many like this with this system is hell divers but the one thing to consider is there is no black cell shortcut cut two weapons this time around where they were right next to the starting point for both that you could end up getting both weapons within the first 10 tokens spent no longer the case here as of the last year and a half you could do that but no longer there unfortunately we also ended up seeing an interesting thing with the black cell battle pass that's added as a bonus is the black cell clan tag you can now equip which is interesting it'll give you a little crown as the clan tag rather than anything else Weapons, we of course saw the Krig C and the SOG both available within the Battle Pass. The SOG coming on page three and the Krig C coming on page six. Again, I think it takes roughly about 30 tokens to end up getting that if my math is correct. But again, you don't have to end up earning the entire page leading up to each of those to end up unlocking them. So you can, if you do have the Battle Pass either bundle or the Black Cell bundle, you can end up getting the SOG with those tokens that are available to you. Probably one of the biggest things that is not mentioned in patch notes and is something you just had to kind of stumble upon is a massive win I think XP tokens were not only combined so that on Warzone you see your entire cumulative total between Modern Warfare 2 up until now but they were also transferred to Black Ops 6 meaning that all saved tokens do in fact and did in fact carry over just not for the first few weeks or so that we had here at this so a little bit of a bummer that it was not ever advertised I'm sure a lot of people either spent those thinking oh yeah they're not going to transfer so may as well get them out of the way now in the ending days of Modern Warfare 3 before Black Ops 6's launch or maybe you saved them but it would have been nice to know but it's definitely nice that we do have those still transferring over they're not lost forever or they're not just only applicable in war zone so if you are a grinder myself I think I did the math I have like 15 16 days of double XP from all the battle passes all the extra stuff from launch and all the CDL viewership rewards and everything from the last two years so not caring about that kind of stuff is kind of coming clutch here at that so anyways those were added in and additional noticeable features there's a new skins option in the customization tab for weapons now as well which allows you to essentially apply blueprints underneath a camo you already have selected and applied for that weapon kind of just allowing you to quick swap between builds which is pretty cool but beyond that, starting into things that were showcased in the patch notes, the Prestige Master Hub is now something that was added, which you can see it even if you are not a Prestige Master. You can end up seeing the basics of this hub here, where it showcases the Prestige Master rewards, then each category through level 100, all the way up to level 1000, and the classified rewards, which are then an instant unlock, which appears to be six additional items you end up getting for getting to level 1000, all of which are classified if you try and preview that. Fingers crossed they're pretty good, because I mean, that is a massive massive grind 
but you end up seeing that you do have those first upwards of level 90 and then of course probably going through either every 10 or every 20 levels again throughout 100 to 900 and upwards of 1000. I personally don't have access to those because they only unlock once you end up reaching that point but it is something you can at least now see the sort of basis and the preview of what is to come in that larger grind at hand, which fun fact is roughly 50 million XP, the equivalent of 50 prestiges within Black Ops 6. But anyways, we also saw map adjustments of Low Town, Protocol, Red Card, and Vault, with Nuke Town and Extraction, as well as Hideout being a part of that core map pool, Heirloom being added to the face-off map pool, Spawn Logic was updated across several maps and modes to reduce the chances of spawning near enemies, and starting spawns on Subsonic were changed to prevent damage from opposing enemies as soon as the game started, so like shooting through mid, you could end up damaging players right out of the gate. Game Chat should be fixed now, it was described it was an addressed an issue where players were unable to hear each other during intermission between rounds and in post-game voice chat. So you should be able to talk your talk, man. That seemingly was a bug and is now fixed out. Very first thing I heard in game chat was somebody at 9.30 a.m. in the morning saying, man, I hate this game so much. Dude's going through it weapons this is where we get into a lot of specific detail on things but we're gonna go top level and showcase everything on screen you guys need to know in terms of more specific details but in the interest of time not rattling off every single adjustment that has been made assault rifles in general they increase the damage values for some of the assault rifles to ensure that they kill in one bullet in hardcore mode which is definitely nice headshot multipliers were changed to either have kept the bullets to kill with headshots or the same or improved some of the minimum damage ranges so the xm4 saw a slight buff but also a reduction in headshot multiplier for the base and the chf barrel the aims 85 again saw a slight buff for these same things but also reducing that base level and chf barrel headshot the gpr 91 saw a slight buff but improvements to sprint to fire tax sprint to fire slide to fire and dive to fire attributes while again seeing those reductions in headshot multipliers the goblin mark ii saw a slight buff all movement speeds were improved literally by 0.01 meters per second then a sprint to fire and tactical sprint to fire time improvement smgs the compact 92 saw a buff and a nerf the minimum damage range was decreased but the headshot multiplier was improved so that it is a one shot that allows headshots in hardcore shotguns the marine sp saw adjustments the damages at all range but the minimum damage range was increased for a buff the multiplier was increased from 1 to a 1.5 which is interesting that we only had a flatline 1.0 multiplier on that and then there were also additional multipliers increased the asg9 saw similar where there are buffs to damage ranges minus the damage range one and that range extended from 1.4 meters to 15.2 meters the marksman rifles saw handling improvements for the swat 556 and ads sprint to fire and tax sprint to fire with rapid fire having its recoil penalty increased kind of drastically and then the ak saw handling properties slightly nerfed where it increased that time that it takes the sprint to fire and tactical sprint to fire and the rapid fire attachments it had its burst rate reduced increase the fire delay and then increase the recoil penalty so rest in peace my sweet prince to the aek that thing has been nerfed into the ground sniper rifles generally speaking the baseline flinch was lowered and flinch resistance by stock attachments was reduced while they increased some of the aim walking movement speed bonuses on stocks ads idle sway delay was improved by default on all snipers meaning there's less deviation between that aim point and when you actually aim down sight and then it kicks into play so again kind of going into what modern warfare 3 did last year with snipers coming back to that point maybe not exactly like perfectly but getting closer at least they said more feedback to mold weapons will be used in the future and then we saw some handling improvements to the lwa3 frost line svd and lr762 perks we saw a slight reduction to ninja footstep volume slight reduction to default footstep volume overall as well as mentioned which totally honest i feel like i don't hear anything anyway so i don't know if that's a skill issue hardware issue or they just don't exist then selection of perk greed will now actually allow you to get that perk greed that you're selecting instead of putting you into the tier one selection that was a small annoying bug but happy to see that fixed the archangel had a fix for the rocket exploding immediately after when firing near a wall which i genuinely thought was just like a pathing or geography issue with the map because it happened to me multiple times where i just thought the hitbox of whatever i was trying to shoot over was too big or something nuketown and private match support was added back in for theater mode and then we saw stability fixes and that's multiplayer warzone is where a 
ton of things come into play, obviously. Content, Area 99, that was something that was added in. Though when I jumped in, I noticed my FOV was only changed. So make sure you check your settings here, jumping into Warzone, if you guys are going to be doing that at all. Urzik Stan saw reverts back to pre-season three, so you don't have those pop-off adjustments. You don't have anything that was added later on down the line with the bunkers or anything, which is odd but adjustments that were made no less. We saw additional features like the Warzone menu UI was reworked. I actually quite like how that looks now. The armory is actually already live in a dubbed beta state for Warzone, despite not going live until mid-season for Black Ops 6, where you can end up getting content you didn't quite earn in any of the seasons prior with Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3. Noticeable changes beyond that, Warzone camos were added in for the weaponry with Black Ops 6, and God have mercy on us all because these might be some of the most annoying challenges I think I've ever heard of. Regular straight line kills, totally fine. No problem with that. Some of the specials I've seen are insanely weird, borderline stupid. Then for the categorical mastery challenges, five eliminations while being the most wanted contract, five kills on enemies affected by your stun, flash, or shock charges. Not looking forward to doing those 33 times, but hilariously, if you can get past all of those, five kills without dying two times for Abyss is actually insanely easy in a Plunder or Warzone match, especially if you end up playing in a party. And we don't quite know yet, but if cleanups count for that as well, that would be insanely easy also. The Warzone perk system has been adjusted to include new and returning perks with wild cards as well. There's a sorting option for weapon create a class between games where you can move between the D-pad in weapon selection weapon camos do not transfer to black ops 6 and vice versa so all those camos you earned in modern warfare 2 and 3 are specific to modern warfare 2 and 3 weapons and vice versa black ops 6 camos being specific to black ops 6 weapons bummer but kind of expected that seems also like some of the camos are either busted and or glitched while they're also recategorized in some of the camos so for some reason if you're looking for one specific camo it may not be in the exact place you thought it was beforehand before this update gameplay just breezing past this we saw a ton of adjustments the body shield dedicated melee weapon shootable doors the singular primary weapon again now minus wild cards self revives will now auto pick up which it'll scoop that up if you are close to it and need one live pinging that duration has dropped armor plate replacement speed has been sped up making it a little bit quicker there's an abandoned timer which is that give up mechanic that was dropped by a second from five to four seconds to now mitigate the removal of the interrogation feature movement omni movement obviously there for everything you have unlimited tax sprint with that perk or with the dedicated melee weapon out you have mantle protection tax sprint duration at a base was increased to four seconds rather than two landing tuning that shell shock effect has been reduced you now have vertical and horizontal zip lines and ascenders redeploy drones are now static and stay in place and do not move when the gas overtakes them when that happens they're just gone and removed from the map the streamlined inventory system is here we of course have those new perks lootable perks return specialists can be found in rare loot drops or care packages containing all 18 perks and also can be purchased at the buy station for thirty thousand dollars though if you do end up dying with specialist it disappears on death it cannot be transferred or looted off of that dead body even if you come back for it there are also new streaks and new equipment and then weaponry this is where it just this is where we have so much to talk about and again we're gonna breeze past this on screen you'll see everything kind of flying by in that listing the way we mark this kind of stuff just as a refresher if you're new here green is a buff making it better red is a nerf making it a little worse and then yellow is just kind of inconsequential changes bug fixes minor things that don't adjust the sort of stat line of what you're using or are things that are more so neutral so you'll see all that start to be scrolling on screen now here for you and really it's just a ton of weapon to for Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. Everything right now with the integration for Black Ops 6 transfers over as you'd expect. So those changes we talked about will also be made within Warzone as well. But on deck and the chopping block is the Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 weapons, which they had a major work to them to allow firstly for minimal cons in the attachment category to match the aspect of Black Ops 6 that allows more so positive building on top of your weapon rather than sacrificing a ton of different things here. But in regards to weapon tuning, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 weapons, a ton of them were adjusted in the areas of say like the damage ranges, the bullet velocity, bringing a lot of this stuff either in line with other weapons or decreasing slightly to allow for other weapons to reign supreme. It's this sort of meme that every single year the new game is always going to be the best weapons and it's historically held up so it's not necessarily so much a meme as a prediction that's going to happen 
but you'll see that a lot of this stuff is again slightly below black ops 6 weapons while in and of itself more so balanced out so that kind of weapon tuning was introduced we saw ground loot adjustments where it removed and added a bunch of different stuff vehicles the flat tire and repair mechanics are now entirely removed plus you no longer need fuel to end up being able to drive your vehicles around so you can drive them for as long as you want it seems at this point making traversal a lot less stressful per se but of course you do still have that health of the vehicle and because you can't repair it it is something that once it's done it's done so you do have to take that into account we also saw the firing range where we had the damage summary available, armor plates, default health, default perks, all of that being Warzone specific for the Warzone specific firing range. Reset speeds will be faster. Hit locations are updated to match Black Ops 6. There's movable targets available and then target collision improvements have been made. So that is everything here in regards to Black Ops 6 and the update for Season 1 across multiplayer and Warzone. Zombies, we don't really focus too much here on the channel, but a lot of it just come down to a lot of bug fixes, a few things like the directed mode being added in, some weapon tuning that adjusted things slightly, but that said, that is where we're at and where we're going to wrap it up. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm excited to jump in. Been working all morning on this video. Went live a little earlier, so got to at least get some footage here out of it, but also missed more time to play the game. So looking forward to jumping in. But for now, let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe for more Black Ops 6 Season 1 coverage. I'll see you guys out there. Take care and peace.